What's going on there, fellow YouTubers? It's Chris back with you with another cool little video. All right, guys. I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm, I was extremely happy to hear about the announcement uh, from NASA. And I was thinking, oh, wow, they're going to actually probably narrow down the idea of the, um, uh, the methane on Mars. Maybe they can narrow it down, try to figure out what's causing it, so on and so forth. Uh, Peter, also known as Space, Space Kids, we also had a, a good laugh because he was saying, well, maybe I thought they were going to like talk about maybe uh, ancient civilization in there. So we both started di and dying and laughing about that. But I said, yeah, not likely they're going to divulge that information anytime soon. But we had a good laugh about it regardless. Um, but I, I don't know about you guys. I was so disappointed. I, I really was. I mean, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm saying NASA confirms evidence that uh, liquid water flows on today's Mars. I'm going, okay, cool. Um, so I'm thinking about that and I'm saying, okay, okay, that's, that's a little odd, but okay. Um, and I'm saying to myself, all right, well, they said that they use a spectrometer for this. Now I'm going, okay, spectrometer. Uh, let's just look at imaging spectrometer. The imaging spectrometer is an instrument used for hyperspectral imaging and imaging spectroscopy to acquire a, uh, spectrally resolved image of an object or scene often referred to as a data cube due to the three-dimensional representation of, a, of, of the data, rather. Namely, two axes of the image corresponds to distance and the third to wavelength. The principle of operation is the same as the simple spectrometer, but special care is taken to avoid optical ab aberrations for better image quality. Makes sense, right? So I think, oh, well, that, that makes sense to me. Here's the problem with it. We've just done, now, Peter and I, we had just done a, uh, a Skype session on the capabilities of the cameras, so on and so forth. And then we just did uh, uh, the Hangout, and we talked about this more in depth. The high-rise camera on the MRO, or the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, is capable of taking photos of objects at a 3 to 4. Now, keep in mind, as small as 3 to 4 diameter uh, feet in diameter. Isn't it possible that these guys would just take a simple photo or video? Of course, we already believe they have, but they make it sound like, no, we can't use that kind of thing, and we can't just take a simple photo or, or a video. They can see, again, for people who don't know, we've talked about how um, the the uh, Curiosity rover doesn't have a GPS, according to them, doesn't have a, like an odometer kind, kind of thing, so they use the MRO to actually look at the, the, um, the wheel marks of the Curiosity rover, or the MSL, um, and they can see how far this thing's going, whether inches or feet, depending on if they're using the whole revolution of the wheel. They can tell just how far it's going around. They can see just how many feet this thing. That thing is doing it from orbit around Mars. And yet we can't take a picture of a simple lake, river, water. You got to use actually other special tools. Uh, yeah, I just find it hard to believe, and I think it's bogus. But here's another thing. Let me. These are going to be mostly uh, observations, so just... You know, you have to excuse me for jumping around like this. Okay, according to this, now, of course, this is a composite. Again, why aren't they using normal photos? Why aren't they using real, down-to-earth, crystal-clear photos like these things are perfectly capable of doing? Nobody knows. All right, Doc, narrow streaks on mountain, uh, Martian, rather, slopes such as these at uh, Hale Crater are inferred to, uh, to be formed by seasonal flow of water on contemporary Mars. The streaks are roughly the length of a football field. A football field. Keep this in mind now. It's 360 feet or 120 yards. Now, it's usually 100 yards, but you've got the two 10-foot end zones. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, 10-yard uh, end zone. So, you've got 120. Um, uh, and, of course, it gives uh, credit to NASA, JPL, Caltech, University of Arizona. Okay. Here's my question. Knowing that these are coming down the walls of these mountains. Okay. Let's just look at this one for a moment so I can give you this question. Uh, to point this out, so is the water literally building up inside these mountains and just flowing down like it's showing on this side here? Here's another question. If you were to take a small sand mound and just, you know, pat it down with your feet, maybe it's three foot wide on one of the sides of this mound, and then you would pour like a good-sized pot of, of water uh, on this, on this uh, just let it seep out, don't just pour it all at once, and just let it run down like it's showing here, just like a stream of this, how much water do you think is really coming down? Because think of this a moment. What do you think is going to happen to that water the second you start to, to pour it? It's going to it's going to start to uh, be absorbed by the sand. It's going to start actually sinking into the sand. 
So then it had to be an awful lot of water. It'd be darkest at the top, like it's showing here. It had to be darkest and then kind of like, like you know, basically fade out because it, it is being absorbed. Okay, but it's making it 360 feet, people. That means there has to be a ton of water coming out of this. So I think there's a little bit more than just a little bit of underground water coming out of here. This is my other thought. You can see where my cursor is. It's actually highlighting this other picture because I can do this here. The, both this picture, and you can see that right there. You can see the actual water flowing down. Okay, wh why don't we see the background of this on the other side of this hill? Or this mountain, call it what you will. The same thing with this one. My guess is if you were to go to the left-hand side of this, let's suppose for a moment that there is a big lake or body of water. It doesn't have to be a p particular name, lake, lake, or ocean. But let's call it a body of water on the, on the over here to the left. And this is the wall, uh, the wall in between certain mountains in this lake. Is it possible, they say it's seasonal, is it possible when it's really cold out, what happens to dirt? It becomes very solid. That The water doesn't flow at that point. However, once it starts to get warm out, it starts to get real hot, it heats the soil up, it starts to, to basically leach through the dirt and come down this hill. Is that a possibility? I believe it is. I just find it hard to believe that this water is seeping up through these mountains and it is coming down. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, is it an impossibility? No. But I just find that a little bizarre. Okay, so now just wanted to throw that observation, a couple of those observations at you. Now we're going to jump to um, some more common sense stuff too, some more observations I made. And I've said this in my last video. You guys can check this out. Is there a real uh, atmosphere on Mars? And I had done this one a while back. In fact, it goes back to uh, September 10th, uh, 2014. So you can check that out, and it shows like clouds. I talk about uh, the dirt, the dust devils, uh, again, the clouds, all kinds of stuff like that, and that, that Mars does, in, fa in fact, have a water cycle. Um, it depends on if they're telling the truth on whether there is a thicker atmosphere or thinner. But let me just run that by you. That's a good segue, because I want to show you this. When you look at the Martian polar ice caps, the planet Mars has two permanent polar ice caps. During uh, a pole's winter, it, it lies in continuous darkness, and I think it's like five months, I think they said, chilling the surface and causing the deposition of 25 to 30% of the atmosphere into slabs of CO2, ice, dry ice. When the poles are again exposed to sunlight, the frozen CO2 sublimes, which means you got sublimation. It doesn't, it doesn't just uh, melt, it turns into a gas like a, like a uh, vapor gas, okay? So which means during the heat, what's going to happen? It's going to rise with the heat. That would make sense to me anyway. Uh, creating enormous winds, which I find this hard to believe, enormous winds that sweep off the poles as fast as uh, 400 kilo kilometers an hour. These seasonal uh, actions transport large amounts of dust and water vapor, giving rise to earth-like frost and large cirrus clouds. Again, my other video, you guys can check that out. If there's any information you're not quite sure of, check that video out. You'll enjoy it. Clouds of water ice were photographed by the Opportunity rover in 2004. Yes, it was. Okay, so now we've got water ice. Now, they claim that there's actually water ice underneath this uh, frozen carbon dioxide. Kind of like what we got here on Earth, if you think about it. You know, they're saying, I'm not going to get into the whole thing whether we're in global warming or not. That's It's neither here nor there. But what I'm trying to get at is that they're saying that a lot of this uh, ice is turning black because of the pollution. And then what's happening is it's allowing uh, the sun to accelerate the melting of the ice. Is it possible it does the same thing on Mars, which means they must have had some kind of industrialization? At least that's my guess. It's all it's all uh, speculation, of course. But it makes sense because it's kind of like the same thing we're doing to this planet. Okay, now, so we got sublimation. Doesn't turn the, the, the ice. Now, they say there's actually water ice underneath this uh, carbon dioxide, uh, you know, layer. Okay, but it, again, it's it's sublimation. It just simply turns to a gas. Okay, now let's push that aside a moment. Now, if you remember correctly, I talked about um, this X amount of, I think there's like 0.2% of liquid or water. Um, they call it salt water, but um, you've got the salt water, right? And you've got, uh, they said that the rover actually registered some temperatures of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, um, at times in the summertime uh, during the season on Mars, which understand, guys, the Curiosity rover is just north of the actual uh, equator of Mars, which where's the, the warmest here on Earth at the equator, just above and just below. Right. OK, so it makes sense. So, OK, so now you've got this 104 degrees. Let's say it's even 80. Forget about the 104. 
it, it, you got this, it's got to have evaporation. We know it does. It's going to heat that sand up. And if it does, if it has hardly any, think about this a minute, has, has hardly any uh, atmosphere, that means there's no filtering. That means it can roast that ground. So it probably gets warmer than what they're even saying. And if that's true, okay, so you got the evaporation. And evaporation, to me, at least what happens here on Earth, is that the, the ground heats up or it just evaporates the water, becomes a vapor, goes up uh, into the sky, it makes clouds. So the clouds form bigger and bigger. It keeps um, evaporating. And the next thing you know, you get uh, more and more vapor in there, and it turns to water droplets. The clouds can no longer hold the water, so it comes down as rain here on Earth. I believe the same thing happens there. But let's go by what NASA says. Let's be fair. They also claim, because uh, you can see it says cirrus clouds. It does turn into cirrus clouds. Okay. But wait a minute. Here's a big question. If you look at the ice caps and the turning into sublimation or turning a sublime, which is nothing more than a vapor, um, and you've got the evaporation coming from the dirt and maybe possibly on top of the dirt as well as just under the, uh, the actual soil. Wait a minute. But they said, they claim that Mars is losing its atmosphere as we speak. And they haven't had any water for millions of years. The planet hasn't. So, okay, if that's true, how are these ice caps being formed again? Okay. And anybody who's been watching my videos, they know I'm actually repeating what I said in this other video. Um, and if if there's no, like I said, if, the, if it's being literally sucked out of, off the planet, how is there water in the ground? How are they finding this water, guys? Doesn't make sense, does it? It simply doesn't make sense. So... You go, oh, all right, so let me try to comprehend this. If it's nothing but due to the evaporation, that's vapor, water vapor, and you've got um, the ice caps melting in or into a gas, and it's just going up into the... Because think about it, in both cases, the heat has been hitting both areas, whether it be the ice caps or the ground itself. It's water vapor. It's going up into the sky with heat, because we all know heat rises. If that's true, and it's it, that all that water vapor should be getting sucked out into space. At least that's the way they claim. If that's true, how are they finding water? Doesn't make any sense, does it? it? To me, it makes no sense. It's a contradiction by NASA, and I think it's a bunch of crap. Now, um, let me see here. I'm, I'm saying to myself, okay, we got a spectrometer. And again, why would you use a spectrometer when you don't need to? You can just take simple photos. You know these guys. We sat in, and again, Peter and I were talking, and we're saying, there's just no way they're not seeing these lakes. In fact, if you were standing there next to the rover, could see a three or four foot puddle standing right next to your foot. It's that clear. Why are they showing these bizarre composite photos and these CGI photos? Why not just take a, a typical photo and just show the people? They can take video. I already told you guys in the specs on that, you know, those cameras, especially the, uh, the uh, high-rise aboard the MRO, it's capable of uh, video as well as taking photo, uh, regular photos, just like the rover is, guys, just like the rover. So we've got tons of water coming out of somewhere. And I told you my, you know, idea of what, how this might be coming down these mountain uh, sides. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. I know I've done this. I've had water and I poured it down a hill, a hillside, and I pat it down. And still the water would be being absorbed unless you, unless you poured tons of it at a time. But if it's just seeping out of the ground as they claim, it would never make it that far. It would be absorbed into the ground. You know, and even then... If you've got, here's the thing too, they claim it's salt water. Now, not all of it is, but they claim it's mostly uh, salt water. And if that's true, wait a minute, as far as I know, a lot of, if you put water through a ground process, if you put it through the ground in certain layers of the ground, it'll come out almost like, like clean water, meaning fresh water. The salt will be left behind and be deposited into the, into the sand. Now, not all of it, I'm sure, but you know what I'm saying? So I want you guys to give me your take on that. What do you think is going on here? I was, like, totally disappointed when I seen this. I was like, oh, good, I can't wait, I can't wait. Um, and then, pff, yeah. Um, there's another page here, too. I don't know if you guys seen this. I put it on my uh, Facebook page. Um, NASA scientists reveal four alarming facts about extraterrestrial uh, life on Mars. And... Uh, last week, NASA called for a press conference to announce a major discovery regarding the planets, the planet Mars. During the meeting, they revealed some pretty shocking information, uh, completing changing, uh, completely changing. I'm sorry, what once thought about the red planet that suddenly doesn't seem so red anymore. Hmm. Um, and this was on the uh, CE page. I'm trying to remember what they, exactly that's called, but regardless, it doesn't matter. You guys will get the links to that. You know that uh, has flowing uh, rivers on 
uh, of water on Mars. Uh, and of course, you know the announcement of that. Um, Mars uh, could have had extraterrestrial life on it. Um, and you can, it goes on and on. There's a part in here I want to show you guys. Uh, the more we observe Mars, the more information we're getting that it's really uh, it really is a fascinating planet. From the Curiosity rover, we now know that the Mars that Mars once had uh, was like I'm sorry, a uh, planet very much like Earth with uh, large salty seas with freshwater lakes, probably with snow-capped peaks and and clouds in the water cycle, just uh, just like we're studying here on Earth. Uh, something uh, has happened to Mars; it's lost its water. Hmm. Um. Let me see right here. Mars is the planet most like Earth, and in the past, Mars was very different. Was a very different planet. It had uh, had an extensive atmosphere, and in fact, it had what we believe was a huge uh, ocean, which they did say. Instead of being like we got the tectonic plates, we've got our different uh, uh, countries like scattered throughout. This was more of a larger, much larger uh, ocean, and it was like more one body of um, land on Mars. Uh, was a huge ocean, perhaps as large as two-thirds of the northern hemisphere. And that ocean may have been as much as a mile deep. So Mars, indeed, three billion, of course, they say three billion years ago, had extensive water resources. But something happened. Mars suffered a major climate change and lost its uh, surface water. I don't believe that was the case. I think something really bad interrupted this atmosphere. Um, and we all have speculations on that, saying uh, back in uh, 1941, we might have witnessed an explosion where there was something caused by... The inhabitants of Mars or something we did, whatever. Um, so, yeah, let me see. Something happened to the planet that drastically changes climate. Um, like, here we go. We we already have statements from a number of astronauts suggesting that intelligent extraterr extraterrestrial life has already been discovered. And then you put, uh, if you read these, there's an abundance there's abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations may have been monitoring us for a very long time. Former NASA uh, astronaut, Princeton physics uh, professor, um, and then it goes on and shows you the source. Uh, I happen to privilege to be privileged enough to be in the and on the fact that we have been visited on this planet, and the UFO uh, phenomenon is real. Yes, there have been crashed craft and bodies recovered. We are not alone in the universe. They have been uh, coming here for a long time. Dr. Ed uh, Edgar Mitchell, sixth man to walk on the moon, doctor of science, so on and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, I'll give you this page, too. It's a pretty interesting read, guys. You guys can check that out as well. So, um, yeah, guys, just give me your take on it. Tell me what you think is going on. Um, I was just totally disappointed. Uh, I was just like, I mean, they're saying, well, that's because they had this hypothesis or they had an idea through testing that they had there was actually water on mars but now this only confirms it come on we've been doing videos like this about water and what we've been seeing i think uh even will's well it's not think will has been doing videos on their shows lakes and looks looks like forest and so on and so on. so i mean we, between everybody who's doing these videos at some point we brought up water water cycles so on and so forth so yeah i mean Suddenly, whoa, wait a minute, we just confirmed it. Because there was a scientist that raised, he was like a kind of a rookie scientist, said, hey, I've been seeing oceans on your in your photos, you need to take a look at this. Suddenly now, oops, uh, we need to uh, check this out. Yeah, now they're confirming it. I mean, come on. Um, and it's and a lot of people claim, too, it's kind of funny, they're saying, well, it's kind of ironic how they're coming out with this uh, information uh, when uh, The Martian, the movie itself, is coming out uh, tomorrow which I'm going to be all over that movie. I'm going to definitely go see that. So um, I want to check that out myself. But anyway, guys, so yeah, give me your take on it. Tell me what you think. Were you disappointed about all this news? Were you expecting more than that? Um, what do you think about what I'm saying? Do you have your own ideas? Go ahead and throw them down. And if you guys haven't seen, like I said, that video, go ahead and check that out too. Um, is there a real atmosphere on Mars? And like I said, that goes back to um, September, what is it? September 10th, 2014. Um, and we've been doing this all as, you know, I mean, I've got more than one video. In fact, I think on, uh, you know, uh, that there's actually Mars is a lot like Earth, so on and so forth. But, but check this one out for starters. It gives you more in depth about the dirt devils and so on and so forth. And then give me your, your take on it as always. But anyway, guys, got some cool ones coming up for you. You know that I'm always trying to stay on top of these things. And, um, I like to let all the hoopla blow over and stuff like that and give you my take. Um, because I don't like to just jump the gun if I can. I just want to get the information straight. Send it to you guys, and you guys give me your take. That's how I roll on this channel. That's the way I always have. But anyway, guys, again, thanks for watching. Always appreciate it, and I'll see you next video.